For the longest time, if you were a big family that wanted a three-row SUV and you also wanted it to be electric, your options were few and far between, and frankly, really expensive. Only now is that starting to change with vehicles like the one that you see here. And that's a big deal for getting more people into electric cars. My name is Tim Levin, senior reporter at Inside EVs, and this is the Hyundai Ioniq 9. A year ago, your main three-row EV options were the high-priced Rivian R1S, Mercedes EQS SUV, and Tesla Model X. There's also the more affordable Tesla Model Y, but its optional third row is cramped and tiny. Late last year, Hyundai sister brand Kia launched the $55,000 EV9, which has been a huge hit and which we at Inside EVs think is a great choice. Now Hyundai is coming out with its take on the EV9, and you can buy one starting early next year. The new SUV will be built at Hyundai's new plant in Georgia, and it's a huge launch from a brand that's already miles ahead of Honda and Toyota when it comes to EVs. The Ioniq 9 uses the same eGMP platform that most of the Hyundai Motor Group's other EVs use. And if that means nothing to you, just know that this will get the same long range and fast charging that Hyundai's really become famous for in the EV space. So in the Hyundai Ioniq 9 specifically, you're gonna get a 110.3 kilowatt hour battery, which is actually really big. It's about 10% bigger than the one that you can get in the Kia EV9, which means that the Ioniq 9 also has about 10% more range than the EV9. In the long range rear wheel drive model, you're gonna get up to 335 miles of range, which is really good because um, although more and more EVs are going past that 300 mile mark these days, there still aren't that many of them. And so that's a really good result, especially for such a big SUV. The other good thing here is that Hyundai says every trim level will actually get at least 300 miles of range. So no matter whether you want the rear wheel drive or the all wheel drive, you're gonna get a pretty good amount of range here. Just like Hyundai's other cars, uh, the Ioniq 9 is gonna be really great for fast charging. Um, so it uses an 800 volt architecture, which basically means that you can charge faster than most other EVs out there. Um, in terms of specifics, this car can do 10% to 80% in just 24 minutes, which might not sound that fast if you're coming from a gas car, which takes, you know, two to three minutes to fill up, but that's really good for EVs. And it's only a little bit slower than what you get in something like an Ionic 5, which has a smaller battery. So while we don't know yet the exact breakdown of the trims and specs that we're gonna get in the US, we do know the basics of the three different drivetrain options that are gonna be available. You're gonna have a rear wheel drive model, which is gonna give the longest range. That's your 335 mile range option. There's gonna be a dual motor all wheel drive option, which is probably gonna hit range a little bit, but you get the addition of all wheel drive. And then there's gonna be a performance model, which has a more powerful motor up front, and that'll get you to 60 miles an hour in 4.9 seconds. So the kids are not gonna miss soccer practice. So another really unique feature in the Ionic 9 is something called vehicle to load, which basically means that you can use its battery pack to power other things like your house or a refrigerator if your power goes out or a TV at a tailgate. You use this adapter basically to plug into the charging port and you can use it to power all sorts of stuff that you might wanna use outside your house. So the Hyundai Motor Group, which owns the Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis brands, has really been crushing it when it comes to design lately. And I don't think that's controversial or biased to say. When you look at cars like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 or the Kia EV6 or the Genesis GV60 or the Hyundai Santa Fe, these cars have really bold designs. Hyundai has been taking some really big swings and the Ioniq 9 is, is no exception. For example, let's take these taillights. You get these pixelated taillights that are going all the way around the trunk and that really fits into the whole design of this car. Hyundai has really taken on this pixel design. And so you'll see these little squares all over the car. You can see them down here at the bumper. You can see them, like I said, around the taillights. When you look at this whole car, I think it looks great. It has this really swoopy roof line that has a really nice curve all the way back to the rear glass. It has these bold wheel arches nice lines, really bold design here. And I think it looks really good and streamlined. You get these flush door handles that pop out. 
here's more of those little cubes. The more you look at this car, the more you're gonna see those little pixels everywhere. Um, coming around to the front here, we also have, again, more pixels. And when you look at this front end, this really reminds me of, of the Hyundai Kona. So it kind of looks like a big blown up version of the Kona, which is another Hyundai EV and it's also available in hybrid. So Hyundai also says that the Ionic 9 has the longest wheelbase of any car in its lineup right now, and that should give it a lot of extra interior space. You can even see the overhangs here are really short. The hood is really short and stubby, and that should give a lot of extra space here. Hyundai has done a really good job differentiating its cars and making especially its EVs look like nothing else out on the road. They don't even really look like each other but they do have some elements that tie them all together. And I think the Ionic 9 is a really great example of that. So we've checked out the exterior of the Ionic 9. Now we're inside. Um, it feels really nice. This is my unvarnished thoughts. This is my first time sitting in the car. It has a real luxury feel to it. It has a lot of soft touch surfaces, a lot of really smooth curves and lines that just feel pretty nice. Um, you have this wood trim on the dash. You have more pixels if you look around over here on the uh, wireless charging pad. Also on the steering wheel, you have four illuminated squares, which will turn green and show your battery level while you're charging. That's pretty cool. Not strictly necessary, but you know, why not? So the infotainment in here is what you would get across the Ionic family. It doesn't really look much different. The reason I'm laughing is because we cannot stop getting it to ding or beep. If you're hearing beeps, that's not how it should be when you actually buy this car. Um, it's just beeping at us because this is a show car. This has a curved display, so it has a little bit of elegance, a little bit of luxury. It looks pretty cool. We got a bunch of phone outlets here. And one thing that I really like about this, and one thing that Hyundai really has prided itself on, is it's not just a big screen where everything that you need to do is in the screen. It has a really good mix of a ton of actual buttons here. Um, so that, you know, when you're actually driving, you don't have to be fumbling through menus. You can just use your muscle memory to say, turn on the, uh, climate control or change your temperature or change the volume. You know, you actually have a physical volume knob. Isn't that amazing? You don't get that in every car these days. So this is an SUV built for families. And so it has a lot of storage around the cabin, which I mean, I think I personally like sitting up front too. It's great for the kids, obviously, but it's really good up front here. You have multiple levels of these little trays where you can put all your sunglasses and phone and stuff. And you have a big center console that does open from both the front seats and the back seats, which is pretty cool. Here it opens from the front, also opens from the back. So that's pretty neat. Um, and in some trims, not in this one, unfortunately, this center console actually can slide forward and backward. So if you want a little more room up front to put your shopping bags or, you know, your purse or something up here, you can slide it back. Or if you want more room for your rear passengers, you can slide it forward. So that's pretty neat. That's also something that you do have as an option in the Ionic 5. One extra little thing that Hyundai is debuting in this car is something called FOD or features on demand. So basically you'll be able to log in here and buy little upgrades over time, new lighting signatures, new themes for your driver cluster. Frankly, I don't know how big a success that's gonna be. I think in general, we've seen a lot of pushback to these kinds of features that ask you to pay for things that are in your car. So we'll have to see if Hyundai actually can uh, provide some things that people actually wanna pay for. People tend to hate microtransactions in video games and they may tend to be just as enthusiastic about them in cars. So we're going to wrap things up here in the front, but we obviously can't leave this three row SUV without checking out how I fit in the back. I'm six foot one, humble brag. So let's check out how I fit in the back row. Yeah. So climbing into the back seat for the first time, you really get the impression this is a really big interior. It feels super spacious. And actually the, uh, the highest headroom that you get is here in the back seat. And you can really feel that it feels super big. I have a ton of space uh, as somebody who's 6'1", again. Um, let's see, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna move this so that it's kind of where, you know, I would have it. <laughs> One of the really cool things about the Ionic 9 and about a lot of other EVs, but you can really feel it in here, is just this flat floor. So you have a ton of room for your feet. 
you don't have this kind of central tunnel going through the middle of the car that makes the middle seat completely unusable. And that just makes it feel really open and spacious and airy in here. You know, a lot of these car companies, <clears throat> Hyundai included, like to say that their EVs are like lounges on wheels or something or living rooms on wheels. I do think that this actually does kind of fit that message. All right, so now that we've checked out the second row, we're gonna hop in the back and see how I fit. Okay. Honestly, pretty good. It's actually surprisingly spacious back here. I think you get into some other three row EVs. I'm thinking specifically, honestly, the Rivian R1S, like that does have a third row, but it's really tiny. And if you're like me, if you're a real, you know, adult sized, um, it's really cramped. This is actually really spacious. I'm gonna move over just so that I can see how I would sit behind somebody else who's kind of tall. And yeah, honestly, I have plenty of room. I don't think that this is just for kids. You could put, you could put adults back here and they would be totally comfortable, even on a long trip. So a couple of things before we wrap things up. The Hyundai Ioniq 9 does have a frunk, so you'll have somewhere to throw your groceries or whatever if you don't want them to be banging around in the trunk. It also comes with NAX charging from the factory. So you'll be able to get access to about 17,000 Tesla superchargers, which is a huge deal for uh, range anxiety and worrying about where you're gonna charge. So you may be wondering whether you should buy this or the Kia EV9, considering that both are three row electric SUVs that share a lot in common. The whole powertrain is basically identical between the two. And I would say it ultimately comes down to design preference. You know, if you really like this kind of sleek, curvy Hyundai design, maybe go for this. If you like the kind of sharper angles and the more aggressive nature of the Kia, that might be your choice. But what I will note though, is if you're looking for the most range, this might be the car for you. With the 335 miles of range, that beats the EV9 by about 30 miles, and that could be the difference. Ultimately, whichever one you choose, the really good thing here is that now we have two really great options for big families who want three rows, seven seats, and an electric vehicle. Remember to like this video, subscribe to Inside EVs on YouTube, and drop us a comment below to let us know what kind of videos you wanna see. Thanks again for watching.